perhaps AI is a wake-up call for us to realize that there is something else. Maybe it's about love, compassion, empathy, human-to-human -human relations, and that if I could imagine our maker could be very frustrated with us, that after thousands of years of evolution, uh, we're still stuck here like rats running on the wheel, uh, doing the routine, same jobs every day and not spending time on what we're passionate about, spending more time with the people we love, thinking about the meaning of life, but just thinking it's all work, work, work. So maybe our maker is so frustrated that he threw AI at us <laughs> that to take away all the routine jobs so we have time to think and to love. And that also gave me a possible resolution to the job losses. That is, are there possibly enough jobs uh, that are compassionate, or empathetic, or people-to-people -people interaction, so as to retrain and absorb the workforce that might be displaced. So if we think about jobs like um, elderly care, nurses, nannies, these are the perfect compassionate jobs, uh, empathetic jobs, and we sure need a lot more of them. Think about elderly care. People over 80 need five times as much, as much care. Uh, a lot of AI scientists are trying to invent robots to take care of older people, but think, think how, how mean that is. Would, would you, when you get older, or your parents, really want that? I had an entrepreneur who built a robot to take care of elderly, and then the only function that was used was customer service. The, the person would click on it and say, how come my kids aren't here? <laughs> you know, or let me tell you about my grandkids. So, Elderly people don't want a robot, they want people. And then there are a million elderly care jobs not filled in the U.S. for the simple reason that it's not paid well. So if we believe that AI will generate all this wealth and some Silicon Valley people we think we should give $20,000 to everybody and be done with it, I think it's much too simplistic. I think, why don't we not give it to everybody. Why don't we take that wealth, whether it's taxed or however generated, and subsidize, um, ed, um, subsidize elderly care, subsidize teachers to, be, to increase the student-teacher ratio. As AI takes over the routine parts of a teacher's job, as AI starts to diagnose for the doctor, they can be more empathetic, compassionate. Uh, they might um, need a different kind of training. Uh, we can afford to have 10 times more teachers, 10 times more doctors, and there would be a lot of jobs. You might think, well, how could someone doing a routine job be trained to be a doctor? Well, in 20 or 30 years, when the diagnosis is all done by the AI, the doctor is really just the human interface of dealing with the patient, teasing out the issues, family history, making the patient feel better, and giving the patient the confidence. And for that, you don't need a 10-year training maybe more like a nurse practitioner. So if we think that way, um, uh, and also teachers, um, why, why can't, uh, we actually are, there will be a 60 minute segment on, on our work with AI and education um, in either next Sunday or the Sunday after that. It's about, uh, a lot of the teacher's job is routine, grading homework, giving exams, giving the same lecture over and over again. If we take that out and let AI or MOOC take care of that, maybe teachers can become more mentors on one-on-one -on -one and giving help. And if that happens, we can have a lot more teachers. And if that happens, maybe we should pay people, parents who choose to homeschool their kids. So these are probably a lot more meaningful ways to spend all the wealth that we collectively make in AI to make the empathetic jobs uh, more meaningful, more better paid, and also to help retrain the displaced routine workers who can move on to those.